Let's begin sitting down this Wednesday evening. Happy hump day, everybody. <laughs> we are down to the last niyama, which is the second stage or limb of the eight limbs of yoga. So to review really quickly, the niyamas were saucha, purity, santosha, contentment, uh, tapas, self-discipline, um, svadhyaya, self-study, and today the Sanskrit words are Ishvara Pranidhana. And again, referencing Eckhart Yoga's article by Emma Newlin, Ishvara means supreme being, greater consciousness, also known as God. Now, I get a little weary of mentioning that word God because sometimes it invokes religion where it's not necessarily that in yoga, it's the divine that we are all a part of this greater consciousness. In fact, in the Upanishads, it defines Ishvara as a state of collective consciousness. And then the word pranidhana means fixing, and it's more often translated as surrender. So the great teacher Swami Sichidananda defines Ishvara pranidhana as offering our actions up to the divine and humanity with the acknowledgement that we are in fact all one. So how do we practice Ishvara Pranidhana in yoga asana, the physical postures? Well, you know what letting go means for you and that will change depending on the truth of your situation, of your body in the moment, of your energy as you come to the practice. So sometimes letting go means taking a step back and not doing the extra vinyasa flow, but maybe even coming down to child's pose. Sometimes letting go means kind of the opposite, sitting within the discomfort of a challenging posture or holding a posture that isn't so easy, perhaps for a few more breaths. So important to pair Ishvara Pranidhana with the previous things that we studied, which are ahimsa, non-harm or kindness, and satya, which is truthfulness. So how do we practice Ishvara Pranidhana in your work, in your dharma, in the path of you following your passion in life? Well, the article talks about surrendering our ego and our selfish desires as very closely linked to the concept of letting go of the fruits of our actions and non-attachment, which is the focal point of the Bhagavad Gita one of the ancient texts of Hinduism that also influences yoga philosophy. Moreover, the practice of surrendering here requires us to acknowledge that we can do our very best in each situation, but we can't really do any more than that. And it's realizing this essentially that allows us to fully engage and be present in what we're doing bringing all our energy to that moment and experiencing it fully just for what it is. And then what happens after, happens after. Summed up in a quote by Corey Ten Boom, worry does not empty tomorrow of its sorrow. It empties today of its strength. So how do we practice Ishvari Pranidhana in daily life? Well, talking about that mindfulness of opening up to what is, it's not resisting the turns and down and uphill of life. What comes and remaining open to experiencing life as it unfolds. We're all dealing with different adaptations that we've been, you know, staying home for months during this pandemic or changing the way we do things, simplifying life in certain ways. That ability to go with the flow of life circumstances is part of the practice of Ishvara Pranidhana. So when we remain fixed and rigid in our conditioned patterns, habits, limitations, it only leads to a limited life. And so the practice of transcending the ego, those patterns established by the ego, is again that great surrender to a greater collective consciousness. 
So surrendering to what is requires trust in our deepest self, our intuition, and the courage to express ourselves for who we are as we are with all of our perfect imperfections. I like that. Which ultimately leads to freedom. So what is your body saying to you this evening? What is that practice of surrender going to look like? Let's take a moment to check in as you sit tall and rooted, yet comfortable, closing the eyes perhaps, and either resting your hands on your lap or maybe a hand to your heart and a hand to your lower belly. And as your body is still now, just take a moment to notice even the subtler sensations, the ways in which your bodies are constantly communicating to us. As you feel the natural flow of your breath, what does that say about your state of mind and energy? So paired with a practice of kindness to yourself, as well as honoring your truth. What is your intention or sankalpa for this practice of yoga tonight? Allow the breath in to find an uplift at your heart center. And with a breath out, hear a whisper to your mouth. Stretching the breath gently in and out. As you take deeper, gently more audible breaths. Feel the length of your spine, feel the softening down of your shoulders hovering right above your hips as your two sitting bones from into the ground. And now place your hands onto your belly, close your lips, and with the eyes still closed, focus on breathing into your abdomen. Feel the expansion as you inhale deeply. Feel the gentle hollowing of the belly towards the spine as you exhale. Now you could continue a sustained way of breathing here, or like we've been practicing for several weeks now, the energizing, mind clearing, bastrika pranayama, which means bellows breath. I'll do a quick demo if you're new to it. So we begin with the elbows bent apart, hands like fists, and with a deep inhale, we raise the arms up, and as you exhale, the elbows bend. And as the hands rise, the fingers spread, the neck stays long all the way. So the mouth is closed, you're using the diaphragm, focusing on breathing into the belly equally in and out through the nose and rhythmically like this. If you wanna give that a try, I'll watch the clock for one minute. Let's prepare bending the elbows apart, sitting tall and begin. And relax. Breathe naturally as you close your eyes and just take a moment to observe. Let's transition into the warming, calming ujjayi pranayama or victorious breath. So as you keep the lips closed, 
Softly narrow the back of your throat and sustain your breath equally in and out through your nose, inviting a gentle, smooth, and balanced whispering sound. Using your sound of breath to align the mind to the body in the present moment, but also to track how you're exerting force and balancing it with ease as you begin to move the body. So continue to listen to that breathing. And if you have a yoga block, take the narrowest width of it, the skinny side, and hug it right in between your thighs. If you don't, just separate your legs about as wide as that. So about hips width. Bending your knees, separate the feet parallel, spread the toes on the ground, extend the arms forward, the palms face up, and go right into activating the muscles that stabilize the lower back here. To so broaden the chest, lengthen the neck, and with slow deep breaths, begin to lower onto your back, keeping the knees bent, keeping the four corners of each foot grounded. Once your head meets the ground, bring your arms down by your sides and slide your feet back until you could almost touch your heels with your fingertips, but not quite. Preparing for three rounds of moving bridge pose, which means we'll inhale to lift the pelvis and the arms overhead, and we'll exhale to lower the pelvis and the arms down by your sides. Let's take the first one together. So arms remain close to your side ribs, ground the backs of your shoulders, tilt your chin slightly back away from the chest. And as you press down through your feet, inhale, slowly lift the pelvis while lengthening the thighs forward parallel, raise the arms overhead, chest broadens and lifts. Then with an exhalation, slowly lower one vertebra at a time and the arms down by your sides. Now take the last two just like that at your own pace of breath. Feeling the fullness of the inhalation, expand all the walls of your lungs, even the back. And feeling the exhalation help you to slowly, with control, lower the spine. So when you finish round three of moving Setu Bandha Sarvangasana, or bridge pose, keep your pelvis on the ground and your arms down by your sides. Prepare to lift and hold a regular bridge pose for your count of seven to 10 deep breaths. So chin tilt slightly back, ground the shoulders and feet, then lift the pelvis, actively lengthen the fronts of your thighs forward, keeping them parallel. Slide the upper arms underneath your back ribs. And if you can keep your arms straight, not flare the elbows apart while the hands interlace, then go ahead and do that. Press the ground with the outsides of your upper arms as you continue to lift the chest and broaden it, especially with your inhales. Now feel your thighs as they remain parallel. Spin your inner thighs slightly towards the ground as if you're gonna pigeon toe your feet, but keep your feet parallel. And then continue to draw the tailbone forward towards the space between your knees. Energizing the backs of your thighs, your hamstrings and your glutes. Imagine as if you're dragging the heels towards the glutes. Don't actually move them. When you feel that you're done, use an exhalation again to carefully lower one vertebra at a time. When your pelvis lands on the ground, remove the block if it's between your thighs. Catch hold of your bent knees and begin to rotate your thighs wide apart. Then circle them back together a few times, breathing in one direction and breathing out the other. Still whispering the breath through the nose, switch directions. Massaging your lower back, warming up your hips. Then from here, catch hold of the backs of your thighs or your shins and begin to rock either forward and back or side to side, building momentum as you massage the back against the floor to be able to land on all fours, your hands and knees facing the top of your mat. Then once there, inhale into cow pose by stretching the spine forward before coiling the chest up. Exhale into cat pose by rounding the back through contraction of the abdomen. 
take a few more cycles if there's any other variation of movement you'd like to explore and warming up your spine neck shoulders feel free to do that On your next exhalation, find your version of plank pose to hold for about five breaths. Stacking the shoulders right above your wrists, spreading the fingers wide so you're rebounding your weight off the ground and feeling space in the shoulders as you look forward on the ground, lengthening the neck. Lower belly lifts slightly towards the back as you engage the abdomen. Long spine as if trying to create a straight back. If the legs are straight, Press through the heels and engage the fronts of your thighs. Two more breaths in plank pose. Feel your sternum at the middle of your chest lengthening towards the front wall of your room as the tailbone lengthen towards your inner heels. With an exhalation, slowly glide way forward. Then bend the elbows back so arms stay parallel, hugging your side ribs as you lower slowly all the way down. Then land your forehead on the ground as we prepare for bound locust pose. As you straighten the legs, point your toes. Have your feet no wider apart than hips width. Reach your hands behind your lower back and interlace your fingers or grab something like a strap with your thumbs pointing to the outsides of your mat. As you breathe in, press down with every toenail and your pubic bone and coil your chest up. Lifting your head gently off the floor, look on the ground ahead. We're here for about five more breaths, maybe longer if you choose. Now begin to press your heels back so much that as the legs are straight, you lift them off the floor. Keeping your feet parallel, Reach the knuckles of your hands back towards your heels and slide your shoulder blades down your back ribs. With your in-breath, encourage broadening in your chest and lifting your heart space. Now notice the length in the back of your neck you're maintaining. Relaxing the face, surrender any unnecessary tension here. Then lower your feet to the ground, plant your hands alongside your floating ribs for Cobra, Bhujangasana. Hugging your elbows close to your sides. Picture the area right under your shoulder blades. Contract the muscles there in your back and broaden the chest with your inhalation. Keep lengthening the feet on the floor. Press up to all fours. Raise the left arm up towards the sky. We're entering a spinal twist and thread the left arm underneath your right bent elbow, resting the left side of your head all the way down, whether on the ground or propped on a block or pillow. And as you flare your right elbow towards the sky, draw the shoulders away from the neck and send your breath across your upper back, spreading across the shoulder blades. You've got just about two more breaths here. Feel the alignment of your two hips. Notice if the right hip is shifting towards the front of your mat like, like mine was. If so, draw it back a little to even that out and allow the twist to happen at your waistline. Deep breath in. Long exhale. Then press the ground away to rise up back to all fours. And with your next inhale, raise your right arm towards the sky. Exhale, thread it underneath your left bent elbow and rest the right side of your head all the way down. Remember to use a prop if your head doesn't meet the ground. Flaring your left elbow up towards the sky, slide the shoulder heads away from your ears and breathe across your upper back as you spread the shoulder blades across it. Align your two hips as squared as you can feel it out and feel the twist deepen at your waistline. Two more deep breaths. Make your way into child's pose for just three transitional breaths, bringing the feet together, knees together or as wide apart as necessary so the pelvis drops down towards your feet. Do lengthen your arms straight forward actively so your elbows are not resting on the mat. Separating your hands at least shoulders width apart 
Reach forward through the fingertips, draw the sitting bones down and back for one more breath. Now where your hands are here as you reach the arms forward, keep them, but separate your feet at least hips width apart and tuck your toes. Now where your feet and hands are, are proportionate for them to remain when you rise up to downward facing dog. Take a moment if you like to pedal the feet out once you're there or to shake and nod your head to help release the neck of any tension. Feel the breath in fully. Feel, hear the breath out to your nose. Now feel your weight spread through every knuckle of your palm with the energy as if you're pushing the, the mat away from your feet. And as you bend your knees generously, lift your pelvis as high as you can and draw your sitting bones as far back as you can, creating the most length of your spine as you drop your neck, drop your head, rotate your outer upper arms towards the floor, broaden the shoulder blades. As you firm the belly towards your spine, also press the fronts of your thigh bones back shifting more weight down through the heels, even if they're not touching the mat. Now let's hold still for three deep breaths. Adho Mukha Svanasana. You wanna feel the energy as the hands are pressing the mat forward as though someone was standing behind you, pulling the fronts of your hip creases up and back. Take a deep breath and bend your knees again. Look past your fingertips. As you exhale, walk to the front of your mat, standing in a forward fold. Feet apart, parallel, press into the ground ahead or your legs, and with an in-breath, lengthen your spine forward, draw the shoulders back. Keep the belly and legs engaged and exhale, fold in. Press down through your feet, inhale, sweep the arms overhead as you stand tall in Urdhva Hastasana. Exhale, trace your palms to meet at your heart in Tadasana. Surya Namaskar A. Inhale, sweep the arms overhead. Exhale, bow forward. Inhale, press with the hands, lengthen the chest forward. Carefully lower the hands, step to your version of plank, exhaling as you lower forward, then down. Cobra or upward facing dog, breathe in. Ground the tops of your feet and coil the chest up. Breathe out, press through the hands, engage the belly to help lift the pelvis back to downward facing. Let's take three to five deep breaths here. As you listen to the sound of your breathing, set a pace that you can listen to that feels slow and steady with which you can synchronize your own sun salutation A. We're gonna do one more and then the third one at your pace. So bend your knees, look past your hands, and this time exhale the breath completely, hold it out, engage the lower belly as you walk or lightly jump to the front of your mat, forward fold. Inhale, press to lengthen forward. Exhale, fold. Rooting down, inhale, rise up, gazing towards the thumbs. Exhale, center at your heart. What are you offering your practice to? Breathe in, sweep the arms overhead. Breathe out, bow forward. Inhale, lift your heart and lengthen forward. Plant the hands and either lightly jump to chaturanga or step to plank and lower as you breathe out. Ground the feet as you inhale to lift the heart, cobra or upward facing dog. Exhaling to downward facing dog. Stay for your count of three to five breaths. And as you feel ready, having set your own rhythm, walk or float forward and take the last sun salutation A on your own. We'll meet in downward dot. Jai Vidhi Rakhe Ram, Tai Vidhi Rahiye, Sita Ram, Sita Ram, Sita Ram Kahiye, Jai Vidhi Rakhe Ram, Tai Vidhi Rahiye. 
when you do arrive and downward facing, let's take a few breaths there. Bring your feet together to touch in downward dog. Bend your right knee to turn open the right thigh bone at the hip as though coming into tree pose. And then pick up your right ankle, cross it in front of your left thigh, flex your right foot. And as your hands equally press into the ground, lift your hips and continue to draw your sitting bones evenly back, engaging the lower belly towards the back, relaxing your neck and spreading the shoulder blades wide across your back ribs by rotating the triceps towards the floor. We've got three more breaths in this hip opening posture. Keep flexing your right foot to support the alignment of your right knee as we externally rotate your right femur at the hip. Take another deep breath in and out. Then inhale, straighten the right leg behind you. Bend the right knee towards the sky and open at the hip. Now you could keep stretching the right thigh upwards, draw the left hip back, or you could rotate the right thigh at the hip socket, adding some motion. Just a few more breaths here. Try to evenly lengthen through both arms. So you're equally drawing both shoulders up and back. Now turn your right outer hip downward Level your two hips and inhale, straighten the right leg behind you. As you exhale, bend the right knee towards your nose, rounding your spine forward in plank pose. Softly land the right foot directly between your hands. Spin your back heel down with the toes slightly facing forward and align your right heel to intersect the arch of your left foot, cartwheeling your arms to rise up. Warrior two. So in this wide stance, your ankles are pretty much right under your wrists as you spread your arms wide. Feel as you turn out your right leg from the hip socket, your right outer hip wraps slightly under your body, causing the tailbone to lengthen straight downward. Aligning your middle of your right kneecap with your middle right toe down the midline of your mat, stack the front knee just above the ankle. At the same time, while straightening the left leg, firm the outside edge of that foot into the ground, preventing the inner arch of the foot from collapsing, and press the top of your left thigh bone back towards the right wide width of your mat. Feel your pelvic bowl sit upright and the spine tall as we take three more breaths, steadying your gaze, just past the right hand or closing your eyes. What does it mean to surrender to something greater than our individual selves? Firming down through both feet, straighten your front leg for triangle pose. If you like, shorten your stance a couple inches to help stabilize. Draw your pelvis towards the back of your mat and reach your right hand forward towards the front wall before tilting it downward onto your right leg or just to the right of your leg. Wrapping that right outer hip still under your body, now direct your tailbone to stretch towards your left outer heel as the crown of your head lengthens towards the front wall of your room spiral the middle of your chest slightly upwards towards the sky. Feel your lower abdomen firm towards the back to support it. And perhaps your gaze is directed up towards the left thumb, unless you're modifying for your neck. So let's take four more deep breaths here in Uttita Trikonasana, triangle pose. Feel the stability of your legs in this triangle lifting the right hand a little lighter so it doesn't feel like you're collapsing all your weight through it. Let's take one more deep breath. Then exhale, sweep the top hand overhead, lowering your hands to plank, where you could choose to add a vinyasa or step straight to downward facing dock. Yeah. 
When you arrive in downward dog, bring your feet together to touch. Turn out your left thigh at the hip and cross your left ankle in front of your right thigh, flexing your left foot, splay your left thigh open. Pressing the ground evenly through both hands, draw your hips up and back as evenly as you can. For a few more breaths. Scanning the muscles in your jaw, your eyes, your neck and shoulders. Feel the support of your belly hugging your spine. One more full breath here. Then inhale, raise the left leg behind you. Bend the knee, turn open at the hip, and either continue to splay the thighs apart as you draw the right hip towards your rear wall, or rotate the left thigh at the hip socket for just a few breaths. A little more opening the hip. Keep letting the head go, relaxing the shoulders up away from it. Now re-level your hips and straighten the left leg as you breathe in. Exhale, bend the left knee towards your nose and round forward and plank. Softly land the left foot right between the hands, spinning the right heel down. Right toes slightly facing the front of your mat. Align left heel to arch of right foot. Then press through your feet and windmill your arms to stand. So ankles pretty much right under your wrists. Left leg turning out completely at the hip. Feel your outer left hip rotate slightly under your body. So the tailbone directs towards the ground. Aligning the front knee with the front middle toe down the center line of your mats. Feel your right leg straight as you press the outside edge of that foot into the ground and firm the top of your right thigh bone back towards the left wide width of your mat. Feel your pelvis upright, spine tall, shoulders relaxing down, arms wide open as you steady your gaze, your drishti. Just past the left hand. Let's take three more breaths. So in this asana, what does it mean to surrender in your context? For triangle pose, let's straighten the left leg, slide your pelvis sideways towards the back of your mat and reach the left hand towards the front wall before tilting it down onto your left leg or to the left, just outside of the leg where arm and leg can press each other. Now feel that you're still rotating your left outer hip under your body so as not to compress the left side of your torso, but rather lengthen it. Draw the tailbone actively back towards your right heel as you lengthen the crown of your head towards your front wall. While the arms are wide open, turn the middle of your chest slightly towards the sky while firming the lower belly in towards the spine. With deep breaths, you might be steadying your gaze up towards the right thumb. Feel your weight get a little bit lighter on the left hand. Stability, triangle pose. One more deep breath here. This time, sweep your right arm overhead, lower your fingertips at the top of your mat, and step the right foot next to the left in a forward fold. Let your big toes touch, your heels be slightly apart, and with an inhale, sweep the arms overhead and rise up, joining your hands at your heart. Shift your weight onto your left foot and turn out your right leg at the hip, coming into tree pose. Hugging the right foot inside of your left ankle, calf or thigh, re-level your two hips and feel your pelvic bowl aligned upright. Steady breath, steady eyes, maybe play with the arms overhead or dancing tree, 
Letting the arms move around as you play with your balance. Vrikshasana, tree pose. Standing tall, lift your heart, join your palms to meet there. One more deep breath. And set your right foot next to the left. Right to the other side, so spread your weight onto the four corners of your right foot. Turn out your left thigh at the hip. Hug your left foot against your inner right ankle, calf or thigh. Rooting down as you lift up through the center of your spine. Deep breaths. Now feel the alignment of your pelvic bowl and how that affects the ability to stack your shoulders above your hips, above your right ankle. The architecture of your physical pose. Last two breaths here in Vrikshasana, tree pose. Join your palms to meet at your heart, breathe in, and step your left foot to touch the right. Let your knees touch as you bend your knees, sink your weight towards your heels. Let's take three breaths in Utkatasana chair into a semi-flow of Sun Salutation B. Lean your weight back, feel the natural curvature of your lower back, and with an exhale, hold forward. Inhale, press with your hands, lengthen the spine forward. Step or lightly float back into your version of a vinyasa. Pace it at your breath. Meeting in downward facing dog, keep your hips leveled. As you inhale to raise the right leg back. Engage the belly as you exhale to step the right foot forward just inside of your right hand separating your feet about hips width apart, spin the back heel down, and keep your hips both facing forward. As you press down through the entire soles of both feet, sweep the arms up and rise into warrior one. Just a few breaths here. So bending your front knee just over the ankle, scissor your right hip back. Press your left outer heel down, straighten your left and bring the left, your left leg and bring the left hip forward. One more inhale. Use the entire exhale to lower from plank into your version of your vinyasa. Let's meet in downward facing duck. And once there, keep your hips squared and inhale, raise the left leg back. Engage the belly and exhale, step the left foot just inside of your left hand. With your feet hips width apart, spin the back heel down. Both soles on the ground, both hips facing forward. Inhale to rise up. Vira Vadrasana 1. So bend the front knee just over the heel and scissor the left hip back. Straighten the right leg and press the outer heel down, bringing the right hip forward. Take one more breath in. Use the entire exhale to lower into your vinyasa. As you pace yourself and pay attention to your body's signals, know when to surrender effort and rest or when to surrender into the discomfort and keep going, right? It's a constant practice of discernment, deep listening. When you arrive in Downward Dog, let's take just a few more breaths. We'll wrap up this first Sun Salutation B, then we'll flow through the second continuously. With bent knees, look past your hands, empty your breath, Hold it out and lift your pelvic floor to walk or float to the top of your mat. With the feet touching, inhale, lengthen the spine forward. Exhale, fold forward. With knees touching, inhale, sit low in chair pose. Exhale, rise up to finish one round. Let's take the second round in a continuous flow. Inhale, chair pose. Exhale, fold forward. Inhale, lengthen forward. Step or float back. Pace yourself to your vinyasa of choice. When you arrive in downward dog, inhale, raise your right leg back. 
exhale, step the foot inside of right hand, drop the back heel. One inhale, rise up to warrior one. One exhale, lower into your choice of vinyasa or none. Taking side two as you feel ready from downward dog. Inhale, raise the left leg. Exhale the foot inside of your left hand, back heel down. Inhale, rise up to warrior one. Exhale, lower into your choice of vinyasa. Finishing side two of warrior one, we'll stay in downward dog for three to five breaths. Feeling the breath in, slow down as the breath out. Ujjayi pranayama, breathing through the nose. Feel the full length of your spine as you draw your hips high and back, relaxing your neck. Now with very bent knees, look ahead of your hands. Bottom of the exhale, hold the breath out and lightly land. Two feet at the top of the mat, touching. Then inhale, lift the heart, lengthen forward. Exhale, fold in. Knees touching, inhale, chair pose. Join your hands at your heart and begin to twist to your right into revolved chair. Parita Utkatasana. Now if you pick it, peek at your knees, see that they stay in one line. Left knee does not come forward to the right, which helps to know that you are not turning the pelvis. That's a good thing. You want to stabilize the lower back, even if it means surrendering effort, meaning not going so deeply in the twist. Draw the shoulder blades down the back, bring the thumbs to meet the center of your chest, and let's take two more deep breaths. Parita Utkatasana. Sink your hips a little lower. Inhale the arms up, chair pose. Exhale, rise up, mountain. Take a deep inhale through the nose. Lion's breath, stick out the tongue, open your mouth and eyes wide. <sighs> Side two. So let your knees touch. Sink your weight back towards your heels. Join your hands at your heart. Breathe in, chair pose. Keep your knees in one line. Exhale, twist at your waistline to side two. If you're looking for more rigor, sink the hips lower, continue to twist. Maybe add the leverage of your arm against your thigh. Peek at your knees, make sure the right one's not coming forward or the left, or none is coming forward or the other. Shoulder blades down the back, thumbs towards middle of your chest. Smile, notice how that can shift everything. <laughs> Two more breaths, or a little bit. <laughs> Sink your hips a little lower. Inhale, arms up in chair pose. Lower your pelvis slowly onto the earth. Lifting your legs, lift the spine tall. You have the option of holding onto the backs of your legs or the ground, or even straightening the legs. Relax the shoulders. Feel your strength from your center. Breathe in. Exhale, that's five. Breathe in. Exhale, four. Steady breaths, inhale. Exhale, three. Deep inhale. Exhale, two. One more breath. Exhale, catch the backs of your thighs or the fronts of your shins, rounding into a ball. Begin to rock and roll forward and back a few times, building momentum to rise up to stand. <sighs> so let's stand with the feet together to touch a little more balanced play as you're standing upright. So shift your weight onto your right foot. Bend your knees together like chair. Join your hands at your heart as we prepare for eagle pose. Turn out your left leg at the hip. Flex the left foot. Wrap the left leg over the right. Bend both knees, sit a little lower. Either the left foot remains flexed, out, flexed outside the leg, or you can wrap the toes behind the right calf, in which you'll need to scissor that left hip back to realign your knees to stack down your midline. To add the arms, if you like, cross right arm over left. Hook your thumbs or wrap the forearms and palms. As you slide your shoulder blades down the back ribs, 
Lift your elbows to the height of your shoulders, lengthening the neck. If you can sit a little lower, it'll actually be more helpful in balancing. Steady your gaze. In eagle pose. Practicing surrender. So we're going to take flight and land in another balancing posture, hand to big toe. So placing your right hand on your right hip, breathe in and catch either your left knee with the left hand as you stand tall on your right leg or clasp the left big toe and extend the leg side. Fill your center. Balance your two hips by rolling the left sitting bone downward towards your inner right heel. As you open the right arm, it helps to counterbalance the lift of the left leg and arm. So press down through the four corners of your right foot, lift up to the crown of your head. Three more breaths here. Uttita Asta Parangushtasana. Feel expansion through your chest as you lift your heart. Nice, deep inhale. Take your time. Bring the left leg in front of you. Raise the arms for inhale. Lift the pelvic floor and set the left foot down. If you need to give that right leg a little shake or a lot shake, take a moment to let go of that. <sighs> then let your feet come to touch. Bring your hands together at your heart. Bend your knees as though coming into chair, but shift your weight onto your left foot. Turn out your right leg. Cross the right leg over the left, flexing the foot or tucking the toes behind the calf. Now here, feel your knees align down the center of your body. If you're going to add the arms, cross left elbow over right. Hook the thumbs or wrap the forearms and palms. Shoulder blades down the back. Elbows lift towards the height of the shoulders. Press the forearms away from the face. If you can, sit a little lower. Listen to the quality of your breath. In your breathing, you can feel that sense of surrender or the opposite. Now, placing your left hand on your left hip, straighten the left leg and bend the right knee open, Whoop. either catching the knee as you flex that right foot or catching the big toe as you straighten that leg and the left arm out to its side. Bring your attention to your pelvis. As you bring that pelvic bowl to orient upright, feel the shoulders stack above your hips. Then feel the ground. Spread your weight through the four corners of your left foot and energize your left leg. Lift up through the center line of your body. Last two breaths. Feel your heart space rise wide open. Bring the right leg in front of you. Keep flexing the foot. Raise the arms. Lift your pelvic floor. Take one breath like a standing boat pose. And set it down. Shake it out. Dance it out. Do whatever you need. And then let's never jump the feet wide apart. Preparing to go upside down in the way that you choose. So let's begin with a wide-legged forward fold. Parallel the feet wide apart. Bring your hands to your hips and roll shoulders back as you breathe in. And then exhale, hinge from your hips, shift a little more weight towards the balls of your feet and lower your hands. Now decide what you wanna do here. If you're itching for more twisting, you can place one hand in front, raise the other arm, about five breaths on each side. If you're itching for more opening the fronts of your shoulders, you could clasp the hands the other way and lift the arms away from the lower back. If you're itching for a headstand, and that is part of your usual practice, you could plant the hands back like Chaturanga Nandasana, bending the elbows back so the arms stay parallel. And with that triangular base, the crown of your head forward, pressing through the hands, you create space in the neck. 
placing the knees on the upper arms or lifting the legs straight up. So in whatever way you're going upside down, let's take maybe five last breaths here. And in whatever way you're upside down, feel the space in your neck and your ability to feel decompression in the spine. Both feet landing on the ground. Lift your chest to rise halfway up. From your hips, turn out both of your legs, bending the left knee out to its side as you flex the right toes up, sinking the pelvis towards your left foot. Skindasana, which is like a half squat. And then the other side, keeping the legs turned out as you transition. Bending the right knee, sinking the pelvis towards the right foot as you curl the left toes up. Then in your own way, maybe by going side to side a little bit more, come to sit in which more of a straddle type of posture. You could elevate your pelvis on a pillow or a block. That can help if you're feeling rounding in your lower back. But do place your hands behind your pelvis a moment. And as you flex your feet, keep your knees pointing up and lift the pelvis. See if you can get the two sitting bones to root down as though they're standing on their tiptoes and lift up through the center of your spine. If you have a block or an object like it that you could place right in front of your pelvis to keep it from tilting forward, you can place that there. And then if you feel like you can maintain the length in your spine, especially at your throat, and fold forward begin to walk the hands forward. Breathing in, pause where you are and feel your sitting bones rooting into the earth while you lengthen your spine from the pelvis. And as you breathe out, slightly engage the belly towards the back to maintain length in it and lead with your heart as you fold forward. Keeping the shoulders free of any added tension. Face free from added tension. Breath as well. Let's take three more breaths here in this version of Upavishta Konasana. Begin to lift the center of your chest as you might walk your hands towards your pelvis. Breathe in to lift the spine upright. Let's bring the legs in front. Bend your knees wide apart and bring the soles of your feet together like a butterfly shape for Supta Baddha Konasana. So as you have the legs in this position, if your knees are rising uncomfortably away from the floor, place something of even height underneath the back, the outsides of your thighs, like bookends, to support them. The further away, the less support, the closer to the hips, more support. So that you can find a good balance here of opening the hips, but also feeling relaxed because we're cooling down. So you're letting go of effort. Then set your left hand to rest at the middle of your chest, the heart energy center. Set your right hand to rest below your belly button at your navel center. Soften the shoulders onto the ground and down your back, and then close your eyes. Take a slow breath, filling up the lower belly, the lowest portion of your lungs, all the way up to the top of your chest. Through the lips, whisper everything out feeling the belly fall towards the back. Once emptied, again, inhale into the lower belly, then to the lowest part of your lungs, your side ribs, your upper chest. Feel the fullness, then again through the lips, softly release all the breath. Feel the belly deflate. Find empty. 
and take two more consciously traveling breaths like that. Inhaling into the belly, the lowest lung, part of the lungs, the side ribs, the chest, and then cleansing exhale all the way out. Lying here, I'm going to lead you through just a brief moment of a body scan, a practice of yoga nidra, that of surrendering the mind and the body. So you can choose to remain in Supta Baddha Konasana, the position we landed in, or something more comfortable for you so that you don't feel like you're efforting to hold your body up at all. Then as your eyes remain closed, allow your breath to now just flow naturally. Feel what is supporting your legs, perhaps a prop, perhaps the ground. Feel the weight of your ankles as the soles of your feet soften. Feel the bones of your legs, your knees, as the muscles of your calves and thighs soften. Notice your two hips and what they're resting on. Feel your glutes relax. Feel your abdomen soften. Observe what is supporting your back and feel the curves of your spine. Letting go of any effort to hold it up. Observe your two shoulders left and right. Feel the weight of your arms, left and right. Softening down to your fingertips as you rest your wrists and elbows. Observe the neutral curvature of your neck as you soften behind your ears, relaxing your jaw. Notice your tongue at ease. Be aware of the subtlest weight of your eyeballs as they sink into their sockets. Allow the muscles around your eyes to let go. Feel the weight of your skull containing your brain and surrender to the weight of gravity. Resting here in Shavasana.
For the remainder of two minutes, feel free to rest longer in Shavasana or to lift your body up to sit in meditation. Take your choice. Welcoming a breath in, take a long exhale to your mouth. And if you're going to close the practice with us, let's meet sitting up, joining the palms together at the heart. I invite you to reflect on what it feels like to offer up your efforts to something greater than our individual self. To collective consciousness, greater humanity, the divinity within all of us. What does Ishvara Panidana mean to you? Close, chanting one ohm. Take a deep breath. Uh, light in me bows to the light in you. Namaste.